I'm here before the Rosary Basilica at Our Lady of Lourdes in France. And we're going to be going inside to take a look at one of the images in this beautiful basilica. And it shows the Trinity. I thought this would be a nice treat for you on this Trinity Sunday. Here in the Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary, we find a chapel featuring a mosaic illustration of the Annunciation, created by Melchior Doze in 1896. It struck me as an unusual Annunciation scene. For example, above the scene, we get a glimpse of the Holy Trinity. The Gospel of Matthew refers to the Trinity and what is often called the Great Commission in chapter 28. Jesus said to his apostles, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons, yet one God, is mentioned here in the Gospel of Matthew. It addresses the ontological or essential reality of the Trinity. Returning to this mosaic, we can easily see the Father and the Holy Spirit, but where is the Son? Let's take a closer look. This Annunciation by the artist Doze has all of the characteristics of earlier Annunciation scenes by the great masters. Leonardo da Vinci's Annunciation, located at the Uffizi Museum in Florence, for example, has the angel Gabriel greeting Mary as she is meditating on the Word of God. Mary seems to be caught off guard while Gabriel offers the message on bended knee. A closer look at this doze image reveals a certain movement. Notice, for example, the knitting material in the lower right section of this mosaic. Mary seems to have left this ordinary task behind in order to take up the word of God, which is on the scroll before her. However, unlike da Vinci's Annunciation, Mary seems to have even left the Word of God behind as the scroll is left fully open and lying before her. Notice too, Gabriel's banner is also lying wide open as if to say that the conversation between the angel and Mary has been concluded and now replaced by an even greater and glorious event. This gives us the answer to the question, where is the Son of God to complete this Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? We see the Father and the Holy Spirit, and now we understand that the Son is within the womb of Mary. Everything has stopped. The menial knitting work, and even the scripture for Mary's meditation, and even the angelic conversation have been set aside as the Word of God, the Son of God, is now found incarnate. The mosaic scene is more than an annunciation, but rather an incarnation of the Word made flesh. Here we see a dynamic relationship between the theology of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons and one God, and the economy of the Trinity, that is, what does the Trinity have to do with us? The answer is revealed here as God becomes one with us. The Trinity is more than some abstract theological construct, but is very much a part of our lives. This is what we refer to as the economy of the Trinity. And as Pope St. John Paul II said, Mary, at least in this case, is an integral part of the economy of the communication of the Trinity to humankind. As we celebrate this feast of the Holy Trinity, let us allow the economy of the Trinity to take effect in our lives. Let God be your Father. Let the Spirit of God sustain and animate you. And as we heard in our gospel today, let Jesus, the Son of God, say to you, Behold, 
I am with you always.